Once again, my favorite part of all the programming we do, cool coins. We're going to walk around the floor and talk to the different dealers to find out what cool piece of numismatic history they brought with them. There's all kinds of things that make a coin or a banknote cool. Age, rarity, design, why it was issued, the metal it was made from, all kinds of factors tune into this. We're going to show you some great examples. I've got a cool coin with me. And my 31 years of this being in this business, uh, you know, I, I, every now and then I'm amazed at what comes my way. Uh, an 1861 $20 gold piece in MS67. This is without a doubt the highest graded Philadelphia Mint Type 1 or Type 2 $20 gold piece and it certainly compares with any Type 3 $20 gold piece. In fact, it's probably one of the finest gold pieces you'll ever see in a high grade, especially being as big as this one is. The 1861, this is a crazy, crazy coin. How did anybody save this coin since the Civil War period? And it's not a shipwreck coin either. It dwarfs all of the, I think, 12 1857 S20s that came up from the shipwreck of Central America. Somebody had to have this in a, a desk. They had to have it on, on felt. They had to care for it, care for it. There is not a blemish on this. There's rolling luster. It's a, it's a sight to be seen. It's on our website, too, aucmcoins.com. You can get a close-up image of it if you'd like. What kind of value? This is more than half a million dollars. One of our favorite coins that we bought in the last week was an 1876 trade dollar in PCGS MS66. Um, we just bought it last week and we just listed it up on our website and brought it with us here. Um, it, we have it on a prominent display in the case. It, we just thought the coin is amazing eye appeal, great luster, and it's a kind of coin that you really just don't see gem trade dollars with flashy, outstanding eye appeal. So this is one of the coins that we were just that we, we bought, we really thought was just a really nice coin, and that, you know, for the right collector, that whether you're building a typeset or a trade or a trade dollar set, that you know, the right collector might find this coin and really say, "I need that coin" or "I like that coin." We really love the coin. So, what is a trade dollar, and why are they popular? Trade dollars were dollars that were made primarily for use in Asia um, back in the later 1800s, and they were less popular than the Morgan dollars, which came out right afterwards, being that they didn't circulate that much in the United States. So it, it's, a, it's sort of a niche market, but there's just not really a, many high quality ones out there. And, that, and that's what makes this coin stand out. What kind of value? Um, the coin is about a $30,000 coin right now, which is unusual to find a really nice high quality coin in that kind of grade range for the quality. It, it's the, the price, the auction records are, they're all, everything is out there, but it's, it's just a nice, exceptional piece. I have here a note that has a lot of uh, history with it. Uh, this is an 1863 $10 uh, legal tender. Um, actually, the cool thing about it is it's got Lincoln on it. It also has the cool signature of Spinner. You know, if you look at it and later, I guess you might have a chance to uh, get a close up on it. It's really cool and it's got one of the coolest signatures that I've seen in the paper money thing. This actually, they started uh, between the demand notes in 1861, 62. The front is very similar to the demand notes that were actually issued to try to help uh, uh, finance Civil War, et cetera, in 1861. And that's how the original green back came by. And the back, it's basically all green. Well, as you can see, this is green. The other one is a little bit different in green. But this is a pretty cool note. And I, I find it that it's one of the most popular notes that we sell. Um, these, the paper is very thin compared to the later issues. And they weren't cut as nicely back then. So to find, let's say, a note like this with a good margin all the way around is really uh, kind of like scarce and actually puts it up in a high grade with it. What kind of value? Uh, this is not a very expensive note. It's probably around a fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 note in the grade. I bought a, uh, brought a uh, 1919D standing Liberty quarter. Uh, it's, a, it's a full head uh, coin. It is graded by PCGS and uh, verified and endorsed by CAC. 
MS62, full head. It's got a great look to it. Uh, it's a beautiful coin, and it's one of three uh, three coins uh, in that year and mint that are uh, endorsed by CAC. Why is the Standing Liberty series popular with collectors? It's a beautiful coin. Uh, it's a uh, uh, there are some pretty expensive uh, issues in that series, but it's not terribly long. Uh, I wouldn't say it's easy to collect, but you can do it. You can complete a collection of coins. There's a couple of bigger coins in, say, very good or fine that are affordable, you know, generally affordable. And, uh, you know, this is uh, somewhat pricey for, uh, you know, it's, it's one of the key dates of the series. It's somewhat pricey, but we've got it. Uh, we're offering it for a fair price of $7,500. It's an eight, a large set, an 1804 restrike, and at the time, uh, in the early days of the mint, when they were through with the dies for a given year, they sold them for scrap metal, and they didn't deface them. So this particular 1804 restrike, the obverse is really an 1803 Sheldon 261 mated with an 1820 Newcomb 15 reverse. And these dies were sold as scrap. They sat until after the Civil War when someone took them, altered the three to a four, put the two together in, in a press and started striking restrikes. So this is a total fabrication using real dies. And how were they sold and why were they collected? Were they collected back then? They, yes, they were. I think it was sort of like the gallery mint from a few years ago that people that couldn't afford an 1804 would buy one of these restrikes and put it in their set. And over the years, the 04 restrike has become part of the whole series. What kind of value? Uh, this one is an MS-63 and it's worth about $2,500. I always try to have some cool coins and one of the most exciting that I have at this particular show is an 1889 Carson City Morgan Dollar. Uh, this coin was uh, been certified by PCGS as actually Mint State MS61. The thing that's unique about this coin is there was only 350,000 of them minted but the majority of those were melted and so this is a very rare coin but it's extremely rare in uncirculated condition and we're proud to be able to have this coin for sale, particularly at this show. Why is Carson City so exciting to collect? Those? Well, the West and the Carson City has always been probably one of the most popular mints in our country, just because of the history of the Carson City and where it's from. So not only in Morgan dollars, but the Carson City is a very popular item. And that's one of the thing that draws uh, interest and purchasing is popularity in this business. And you so you throw in popularity and, and rarity, you got a winner. What kind of value? Uh, this particular coin here, we've got priced on the website at $28,500. Uh, might could be purchased for a little bit less than that, but not much. Yeah. Well, we brought something that's kind of cool, and I'm not sure uh, how most people would look at it, but it's one of the uh, things that we try to do in uh, is showing people that we're prepared to deal any kind of a deal that uh, is uh, reachable by both sides of, of the table. So uh, today we brought a few uh, uh, chips uh, that uh, we use for uh, currency and it uh, happens to be thousand dollar chips from the Venetian in Las Vegas, Nevada. Now how do you come by chips like that? Well, how do I personally come by them is, a, is pure and simple. I have a love for blackjack. But uh, we actually do have people that come up to the table and they might be visiting from some uh, other areas of the country. And uh, we've actually been known to sell coins to people in, in the Euros, the Swiss 20 francs, and uh, even in uh, poker chips. Are there not collectors of casino chips? There, there is an incredible following of, of uh collectors in casino chips and and they are as passionate about collecting their poker chips as most people are in collecting their coins. And I have to ask, how much is the chip worth? The chip is a $1,000 chip 
um, uh, and uh, you know it's as good as cash. You can uh, doesn't pay any interest on it, but uh, certainly keeps the resistance of spending the cash, and a chip kind of uh, holds the values.